berries are all the real food ingredients that provide your body everything it needs to build size and muscle. Now, let's get it faster. Flex Food is 46 real food ingredients on demand for real muscle building meals and real results fast. Hi, this is Scott Welch, Muscle Insider Magazine. I'm here with Michelle Crack, promoter of the Vancouver Pro Show. How are you doing today, Michelle? I'm doing great. Um, best I can be with a few days out from the biggest show of the year. So <laughs> yeah, we're hanging in there. Oh, man, I don't know how you do it all. Now, I mean, aside from being a physics teacher, you're actually also an IFBB Pro athlete and an IFBB Pro judge. Tell us a bit about those experiences, because many of the people out there may not know this. Yeah, well, um, obviously, I started teaching first. Um, so that was uh, where I began. And then I started competing back in 2006. Um, as an amateur athlete, always was involved in sports, played rugby, basketball, those kinds of things. And then just this um, kind of came about seemed like something new seemed of interest watched uh, the first provincial show. Well, one of the provincial shows here in BC got hooked. And uh, yeah, started competing. And then over the course of six years, I, I volunteered at numerous shows backstage, made sure I was involved, competed at, you know, the nationals. And then eventually in 2012, I earned my pro card um, and obviously was, was completely ecstatic because in Canada, that was so difficult to obtain. They gave out few and far between cards uh, to us athletes. So everyone was taking quite a while in, um, to get them. So it was great to get that. And then of course hit the pro circuit shortly thereafter. Um, I dabbled a little bit in women's physique as well. Um, so I did figure in women's physique on the pro circuit, did New York, Toronto, a couple shows down in LA. And um, during that time, uh, right before I turned pro, I kind of got interested in judging and, and started sitting on the panel, um, seeing what that was all about. And then I got certified to judge. So I started judging shows um, probably right around the time I turned pro. And then I decided, well, I've got enough experience as an athlete, as a judge, what's next? So I started um, inquiring about adding another um, regional show, which we decided to do as an organization in 2014, which was the Crack Classic. Yeah. And uh, so that was kind of my first show promoting. And I figured, you know, I've got lots of backstage experience with competing in all these shows around the world, seeing what um, what everybody else is doing and be able to kind of hone in on, OK, how can we make some of the best shows here in B.C.? And um, then in round 2017, I believe it was, I flew down to Las Vegas with uh, Sandy Williamson. She was uh, she's one of the head judges for the Olympia. Um, if those of you that don't know, um, I wanted to sit beside her because she had judged me at shows as well and wanted to learn from the best and asked if I could test judge and become a pro judge and um, the pro league approved. So from there, I then I continued on, judge shows in Vegas, again, down in LA as a pro judge and just kept moving forward. And we added the pro show uh, 2015. We decided uh, I put a letter into the league and they gave me the pro show and we just started building the pro show from there. And here we are seven years later, we've got the pro qualifier international event that qualifies athletes for pro card. And then we've got the pro show the next day. So Saturday is going to be the pro qualifier or under the CPA where athletes can compete and then go for their pro card. Exactly. Uh, now, if they win that night, obviously someone is going to win. Are they then eligible to compete the next day in your pro show? Yes. So we're giving out nine pro cards. Um, that'll be for all the divisions. So um, that's all six women's classes, all three men's classes. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, we don't have all the classes right now for the pro show. We are working on that. Mm -hmm. So um, everybody that is, that we do have the division for the next day is 100% qualified and um, can go on to earn an Olympia qualification on Sunday. Now, a lot of people don't know that you can get a pro card in judging. Tell me, <laughs> tell them about that. Like you obviously, you don't just judge because you're, you're a promoter and you can decide to just step on that side of the table. You actually have to get certified. A lot of people don't realize that you actually have to start at oh, the yes. bottom just like you would if you were a competitor. Yeah. Yeah, so basically started a regional show, just like I did. Um, you know, you, you have to test judge first. Your scores get evaluated based on the head judge. There's a discussion um, with you and the head judge, and they determine, okay, are you ready for that next level to start? 
you know, judging. If not, maybe you got to get a little bit more experience test judging under your belt, more shows. So that's based on the head judge um, with Ron Hache and Rudy Jambrosic, who is also um, works closely with Ron. And so once they determine, okay, you're qualified, then the next step would be you got to get your year's experience. And it takes a long time. I know one judge I was talking to last weekend at my show and, you know, he'd been judging for 20 years before he got certified as a pro judge so it you know and I think it's just you have to be a go-getter you have to get involved in the industry it's up to you it's not something like hey I just want to do this right now you got to be backstage you got to know the ins and outs you have to know show operations um, especially me as a head judge here in BC when I go to shows um, I have to work closely with the promoter or the MC. we have to make sure that the flow of the show is going to run a set certain way and it's not always the same for every show it might be based on the number of athletes it might be based on the timing of the shows or how the promoter wants to run the show so um there's a lot of logistics that go in to working together as a head judge and a promoter and yeah, yeah we, go ahead sorry um nick trigilli had talked a bit about this dave palumbo talked a bit about this you being a competitor and being a judge and being a promoter can you really state it for the audience out there how different it is to be front row at that table judging and seeing the physiques versus seeing them on Instagram with filters or not, or even <laughs> video, because video sharpens in differently than your eye would. Can you talk a bit about that? Because I hate when I see competitors bashing the judges about what were they looking at and they're sitting they didn't even go to the show yeah but they all know that this guy Hattie Chupin should have won the Olympia you know or whatever it is it is it's, it's a completely different view you are seeing it live in front of you um you know the camera sure it might be able to hone in and pick up different aspects but you got shadows um, the lighting could be different at that angle where the judges are exactly sitting has a certain set of lighting that we determine in the morning. We usually have an athlete come out on stage and we set it specifically for mm -hmm. those judges, those panels. So those lines, those angles, what we see is very different from the judges, even people backstage or even just seeing somebody stand there backstage and pose. So we have to set the lighting a certain way. So only the judging panel can see it that way. Um, and yeah, it is unfortunate, of course, when you see a picture and of course your friends and family think you look best and you should have been number one. Um, you know, it is hard on, on the judges at times and definitely if things are down to a, a fine hair, you know, it, it could just be that that little bit of water that that little, per, you know, that needs to come out that last little bit, but you might not be able to see it on camera or you might see it looks like they're a little bit fuller, but it might be because they have more water, but this person is a little bit leaner over here. So there's just a lot of fine differences that you don't see up, um, on those cameras cameras yeah now clear up a misconception because a lot of competitors especially at the amateur level they feel or they believe or their coach may have told them that a promoter can somehow fix or or influence the judging how does it separate at the show between the promoter and the head judge and the judging panel we're completely separate entities. The promoter is busy running the backstage, getting things set up. We don't have time to fix, to, to be involved in any way, shape or form. Um, you know, we're so busy making sure that the flow of the show is going and there's no connection there whatsoever between those, those judges, between the promoters, um, other than let's make a good show run smoothly. Those judges are qualified and certified for a reason. And there's a lot of ethics and morals that go along with that. When you become a head judge to have that, um, you know, uh, safety among between the promoter and the judging panel. Otherwise, you know, we're, what are we doing really at this point? So um, that's why that certification is kind of put in place. And that's why judges are, are had kind of selected and picked and watched over to ensure that, that we have that moral and ethic effort. And, and There's also technology. I mean, back in the day with the CBBF and all of the stream that sort of everybody in Canada grew up to, you had, you know, votes that were done by hand and calculator and, you know, the pen, and <laughs> everything else like that. And was the seven a nine or was it a seven, you know? Um, but now, thanks to the technology, I believe they use Muscleware. Muscleware, yes. Thank so you, Muscleware. <laughs> tell us a bit about what the heck that is, because a lot well, of people don't know. Um, I know your daughter actually does some of the stats at these shows. So you have a lot of experience in this area. Yes, she does. And um, thank goodness, because when we used to run our shows, I look back, I don't know how we did it. It was like Excel spreadsheet among, <laughs> among spreadsheet, right? Tabulations. And uh, 
yeah and then the numbers just got so big and out of hand that that is where sometimes errors would happen so thank goodness for Andrew with muscle wear huge shout out to him I know he has a lot of shows now running with the pro league the MPC right across Canada and basically he developed a software um, where the judges just kind of you know, number them and they hand it and my daughter just inputs them in this spreadsheet. And even if there is an error somewhere, it'll catch it. So if numbers are duplicated or if there's a tie or things like that, and literally it just spits it out, it, it's amazing. And it does all the calculations for you. It's a complete software program. And he does a lot of our, it does all the online registration stuff now as well. So none of that gets mixed up which we have issues in the back. So it's, uh, the system is flawless almost. I mean, like we can't, let me say 99.9%, .9%, you know, but it really does a lot of the headache and work takes out of that for us. It's an amazing yeah, software program. So <laughs> grateful for that. And it's really cool that Canada had developed that, that software. Yeah, you know, it's used right? globally. <laughs> it's kind of neat to see that Canada helping to make the overall sport uh, more right. eth more ethical and, and actually a lot more fun. And I think it alerts competitors when uh, mm -hmm. they have to be where. So yep. it's just kind of not, uh, you know, yes. it's really cool to see the sport progress. Yep. Um, now, I want to go back here. 2015, Fuad Abiyad, fellow Canadian, won the men's open class at your show. The first time they had yep. the Vancouver Pro Show. And we were there, Muscle Center had the cage and Dino and like yeah. the whole thing there, there. How has your show changed since 2015 to what we see now, seven years later, of you continuing to grind it out? Well, yeah, that year was amazing. And I mean, I, I'm always about go big, go home, right? So yeah. <laughs> that's what I wanted to do. So I went, you know, to the convention center, we were going to do this. And, you know, it was a huge success. Like you said, Scott, we had you guys with that awesome cage and powerlifting going on. We had um, George St. Pierre come one year. We had Randy Couture come. We had a uh, battle fight league set up uh, an MMA ring. We had pole dancing. You know, we were trying to, and we had a big we had seminar stage and with a lot of sponsors. I'm speaking and and so we really um provided and Dana Lynn Bailey that That's first right. year I remember I flew to LA specifically and knocked on I literally jumped through the line jumped over almost got a tackle I'm like I need you at my show <laughs> and um yeah it you know but since then just so many changes our sport um you know I feel it's different in Canada. We don't seem to get as big of crowds or draws. I mean, we don't have the population for one. So we had it there, I think for about three years and then had to downsize a little bit. The sponsors weren't coming through anymore. We weren't getting the numbers. So we changed over to the hard rock and, you know, that rent went well and yeah. then boom, COVID hit. And I, I feel where we're at now, um, you know, this year is going to be great. Um, the numbers are looking good. We're finally building back up as you know, we, we had the show in December, but we didn't have the pro show. Um, sure. So this is kind of our, our two years it's been since we've had this. So we're going to have to start back a little bit building back up. So we've moved it to Abbotsford, which we had ran the regional shows last weekend, the uh, Vancouver Open and Natural Show. Mm -hmm. And it, the venue is beautiful. Um, it's a great, gorgeous theater. Abbotsford in the Valley is just absolutely stunning. We've got gorgeous weather. So we've had to kind of downsize a little bit. And I'm hoping next year we can grow it even bigger. So, um, you know, unfortunately, due to COVID, that's that's where we're at at this point. But and it's yeah. weekend. In 2020, you had to take a break as everyone did with COVID and the restrictions on crowds, especially here in Canada. But 2021, I believe you brought the show back a couple of classes to just to keep obviously keep the going, the fire going on there. And um, now we go into uh, this show, 2022, and you have a lot of classes in here. And I believe close to 60 pro competitors, IV pros from all over the world. Um, I saw people from Australia that are coming from Mexico. It's just incredible to see the how the diversity that's sort of uh, come out to your show. Yeah, we're seeing um, the numbers go up a little bit more this year. We had about Scott our first year, I think we had close to 120. So wow. that was year one. And obviously, you know, Unfortunately, due to COVID, what's happened is I know a lot of athletes wanted to come up, especially across the border, and we've only recently dropped the vaccination. So it, for them, it was hard to plan their prep. Yeah. You know, the uncertainty, if things are going to change again, we're having major issues, obviously, with the flights, people getting flights. And then, as you know, I mean, people that are flying out, they've got a book, you know, four months in advance. So it's not like you want to, oh, I'm going to prep now, and then all of a sudden it's going to cancel or your flight's going to be canceled so we're seeing a lot of hits with that but i'm really happy with 60 athletes coming out i think yeah. that is actually really good of course most are canadian but 
as you said, we've got, I saw in there, New Zealand, France, uh, Mexico, Iran, um, Australia, I think I saw UK on there. So we're global and this is great to see um, everybody coming back in and, and I have no doubt next year we'll, we'll be even bigger. I, like, I was really blown away to see the support the Canadians had. 32 competitors at that time in which I saw the posting right. uh, are competing in the pro, mm -hmm. pro portion, which is just awesome. And some really good talent with uh, Ian Valliere coming in from yes. Florida, a fellow Canadian from originally yes. from Ottawa. And then Antoine, Val Antoine. Valliere yeah. uh, making a return, which no one saw that one coming. I didn't but, even know. Until I heard it through somebody else. I was really excited to hear that. So that's great. Yeah, so it's really going to be uh, good to see. Now, what can fans look forward to and competitors look forward to at the venue? Because I've heard a lot of good things about the venue. Yeah, the theater is beautiful. Um, the stage is huge. The the attendance, um, hopefully we'll have a nice big attendance. Looking forward to all you people coming out. And um, our vendors, we actually had to get a tent for outside because I, I started to oversell, which is a good thing. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Right? <laughs> so I, I'm like, this is because I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. I was like, oh, you know, um, what are, what is it going to look like? So there was a large interest of vendors and people wanting to help out. Even people that couldn't make it down are, you know, supplying us. The, with swag um like iron energy I, I, they supplied us with 800 cans to not only give um the athletes but also to the the spectators um we've got rain energy fuel coming nice. they're gonna have a massive booth there our main title sponsors are supplement king port moody Excellent. and Newt. so they partnered up this year and uh, i know that Newton, some, right there there we go ah. thank you <laughs> Newton, yeah you know and i hand it to them because they they were on board last year and they have uh you know george with mutant has always supported yeah. me through all of my shows which is great so it's, i'm so happy to have them on board they've done tons of swag overall prize packs so we've got lots of goodies for the athletes and um we've also got drip fit coming ballistic labs is coming they've uh Bert's always supported me there as well and um yeah i'm just excited to to see where uh what this is all going to look like uh unfold for the first time with a new venue kind of a new layout new setup we've got different times this year so we're not running like all pre-judging we're doing a 9 a.m. as men. So they'll do their pre-judging. We'll take a break and then they'll have their routines and finals. Then we do 4 p.m. women, the same format. So kind of a new format, new venue, new fresh look. And um, but, you know, we kind of spice things up a little bit. <laughs> Amazing. You know, one thing that uh, I mean, some of the sponsors out there that watch this don't realize is that one thing I had a lot of respect from you right from the beginning of promoting your shows. You don't play favorites. You know, what do you mean? <laughs> no, never. There was pressures at the time where mm -hmm. large chains may want to have said, hey, I'm going to be the title sponsor and I will not allow you to have multiple sponsors. And really what was really cool about you is you didn't just take the money. You said, no, that's not how I am as a promoter. I want to make things where different merchants can have a fair chance to, to really promote the sport and I think that it says a lot about you that you know you didn't um just succumb to the money that could have been you know handed to you to be exclusive etc I feel it's uh it says a lot about your integrity that uh you wouldn't uh, play favorites that way I think that yeah. really says something a lot Thank you. Well, because I mean, we're all here, of course, for the athletes, of course, the companies, everybody, there, there is that investment, you know, monetary gain for these companies that want to be involved as far as marketing and products. And it is a competition to them. But at the end of the day, this still is a sport for the athletes. And we have to remember that. So as long as we can all figure a way to work together, you know, maybe if there's certain things that I can do with a certain sponsor to make them a little bit happier, if they're spending more money, what more can I do with better marketing online or, you know, things like that. So I think looking at different ways of how we can accommodate all the sponsors so that everybody is involved in giving back to them. And I think, you know what, in my experience, obviously running Muscle Insider, the more advertisers you have and the more diversity you have, the more attraction and buzz it creates around an event. Because it yeah. may be the small person who's selling protein pancake, protein muffins. They tell 10 people that they know who tell 10 people that they know. And it could be a, a legging company or it could be right. the more of these companies that are all there. You're mm -hmm. sort of cross promoting on that. And I've seen it firsthand where somebody may come in and they may get a rain energy drink, drink, 
while they're there, they go over to the mutant booth and grab, say, a BCA and say, hey, I haven't used BCAs. I heard these are good. You know, and it just kind of feeds off each other. And then while they're there, the, um, maybe it could be, uh, hey, I forgot my jewelry. I'm getting my jewelry while I'm here for the stage. And I'm, yeah. I see somebody else I did that, you know, there's a, a girl that was backstage and she's eating something else that she, and it's just kind of networks within it. Well, I think yeah. that makes yeah. it uh, a more exciting event for, for everybody. We're all a big community. And, and I, at the, the forefront of it is got to remember, we're all in it for the health and the fitness and working together. And that's really what this is about, bringing our health and fitness community together. And um, I was talking with Devotee Wear. They're one of our uh, vendors coming up this weekend. And they're like, because they were like, we want to be up at a certain port. Can we move our booth? Everybody wants the prime spot. And I said, well, that's just, that's for the, the title sponsors. Oh, okay. Well, what's it? What do I need to do to become a title sponsor? And we were yeah. talking. Okay, awesome. You know what? Maybe one day we will be one of the title sponsors. Yeah. You know, and that's great to hear, to have them, them thrive and, and be a part of that. The other um, I want to I give props to is West Coast Iron. Yeah. They have always been very, very supportive of my shows. Um, they're supplying all the weights backstage and they're mm -hmm. giving all family, friends, athletes free entry all week long, right into the show, right into the show weekend to come out and compete um, over in Coquitlam. So anybody that, that wants to go there, by all means, please check out their gym. They, um, they've been really, really supportive considering we've kind of moved to Abbotsford. We're a little bit away, but, um, but the fact that they'll let anybody that's friends or family come in as well is, is great. Amazing. Well, I happen to have some friends in the show, so I'll definitely oh. drop my West Coast Iron for a workout. But uh, listen, going through this, um, obviously, how much of the factor of the vaccine and the vaccination, how, how did that play in? I mean, did you find that some of the pros that you talked to in the U.S. were saying, hey, as a whole, they didn't take the time maybe to look into the rules in Canada? Or did you feel like, like, did that have any factor in affecting the number of pros that were willing to come up in Canada or? Yeah, it did. Absolutely. Um, and in fact, Kim Ferrison, my, my MC too, uh, he, you oh, know, yeah. he's great. Some issues. yeah. So it, it was the fact that we were just so still um, stringent on, you had to be vaccinated. Um, and so a lot of pros did not that didn't want to get vaccinated sure, and that's sure. just the way it was. And then, um, you know, even though we dropped it, it was only recently, I think June, June 1st, we dropped it. So, you know, it's a little too late at that point because, yeah, yeah. you know, okay, then maybe they're not quite ready in their prep now. So, um, like I said, hopefully this will, we won't be going backwards anytime soon with our COVID protocols and we can yeah. just keep moving forward and, and hope, you know, I said, look forward to seeing you next year. That's all we can do at this point. Now, live stream, tell me live stream. I mean, obviously, we just finished saying it's not the same <laughs> seeing it in person. And that's why I want to let people know that are locally, you definitely have to go check this show out and just don't sit on the couch with your, exactly. you know, obviously, uh, but getting there in person and seeing it firsthand. Uh, where is the live stream for those who are out of town who just obviously aren't? So we just there. actually, hopefully it should be up soon. Um, we just decided, I, I was unsure because I did want, I want people to come in person. It's, it's sure. you know, to have that audience there for, you know, those athletes to get those family, friends, spectators out, especially for those pros, you know, that are from out of town and give them that cheering um, uh, venue. But yeah. You know, it is what it is. Some people can't make it. Um, you know, there's no, you don't have to be vaccinated. There's no passport, nothing. So anybody and everybody can come now, which is great. But yes, we will have that up here shortly. It's going to be on our website, um, VancouverProShow.com. And it'll be under the tickets tabs. So all of the links will be there. And as I mentioned, it'll be um, the 9 a.m. So same, the pro qualifier and the pro show are the same. So 9 a.m. are men, 4 p.m. are women. And it's just one flat rate. And you get to see the prejudging and their finals and so on. So you can go in and purchase the links will be there um, for anybody that can't make it in. Awesome. Now, in terms of this, uh, what are the pro judges that are coming in to judge this show? We have Ron Hache, the president of the Canadian Physique Alliance, will be our head judge. Mm -hmm. And then we have several judges coming in from uh, Washington area. So we've got Tanji Johnson coming in, IFBB pro athlete. We've got uh, Michelle Mayberry, who is also an IFBB pro athlete. Um, and they both have judged my shows in the past. Mm -hmm. Our excellent judges, uh, Michelle Mayberry actually works closely alongside with Sandy Williamson. So um, you've got some really good judges. We've got uh, Chris Algio and Ivan, I can't quite remember his last name because I haven't met him yet. He's new to my show this year. So Chris uh, judged the show in December for us. 
Um, but uh, yeah, so we've got four Washington state judges coming up uh, that work for the MPC as well. So right. we've got a good, good caliber of judging and know what need to go on that Olympia stage. So bring your best, you guys, bring your best. <laughs> Speaking of the Olympia, I mean, oh. the, the Sandow here. How did you score that one? <laughs> this is from Muscle Mag back in the day from Bob Kennedy. Oh. Um, the gold one, we had uh, a gold one and then there was uh, two bronze colored ones. Okay. Silly me, I chose the br the gold one thinking it was better. I should have got the bronze, but Ben <laughs> Kukulski actually bought the bronze off us. Wow. Um, so we made enough off that sale to buy all three. <laughs> 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 so Dom has a bronze one. I have the gold one, but, um, Okay, so the winners of the pro show, the, the classes that you have, they will get their Olympia qualification. Is that how Correct. it works? Yes, yes. And yeah, they will get uh, the Olympia qualification. Of course, we have our beautiful, I don't have any here handy to show you, but our beautiful, big, massive uh, medals for the BAM Pro this year. So each of them will get one of those. They get their qualification to the Olympia as well. Excellent. Now, in terms of the last question I had was, the judging that is here, the Washington judges and obviously Ron Hashay, are they judging the CPA uh, pro qualifier as well? Yes, and it's technically not the C. It's it's considered the IFBB pro I'm qualifier. Sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry. So yeah. it's still it's mainly yeah. affiliated, but yes, I know. I get a little even though they're the one. <laughs> But they're not. <laughs> um, yeah, so they will also be judging the pro qualifiers. So we have the same judges for the pro qualifiers we do for the pro show. So a national a competitor that's going for their pro card, what's great about this is obviously you're getting a pro judge to judge yes. you. So you yes. can kind of see that the physique would be standardized to what would be rewarded in the yes. pro league, which is uh, just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, this is good. I mean, what uh, I mean, what tips of the, uh, out there would you say for, uh, you know, somebody who wants to check out the show? I mean, what 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 would you say to them that, that to take it all in? What would your advice be to somebody who's kind of kind of come out this Saturday, check out the CPA, obviously, sort of the IFBB <laughs> Vancouver Pro Qualifier? Uh, what what advice would you give? Um, come on out and, and, you know, the energy you're going to feel with, with the athletes there, there was such a good vibe last weekend for all of us to be back together. It really is a family. It's a community. And you're going to feel that when you come out, um, we had huge cheering sections last weekend. It was great to see and, um, just come be a part of it. And you'll fall in love. You'll fall in love with all of us. <laughs> you'll fall in love with the sport, the industry, and just the awe of seeing these athletes step on stage, the hard work, the dedication, the time that goes into this um, for them to step on stage is a lot. And um, just look at the value in that. You'll see it as soon as you see them up there. And um, I think you'll have a great time. It's gonna be a great weekend. We've got lots of vendors come out, um, try the samples, get some product, get involved, talk, get to know people and um, just get out there. Amazing. Okay, Michelle. So where can fans go for more information on your show? So it's www.vancouverproshow.com. All of the information is there. If you go to the schedule and tickets, we have the ticket information there, the links for the pay-per-view are there. And that is pretty much where you can go, or you can go to our Instagram. We do post a lot of stuff on there as well. It's Van Pro Show at Van Pro Show um, Instagram handles. So please do sign up for that and um, be able to follow us along in our journey all week, all weekend. Awesome. Okay. Thanks so much, Michelle. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it. These are all the real food ingredients that provide your body everything it needs to build size and muscle. Now, let's get it faster. Flex Food is 46 real food ingredients on demand for real muscle building meals and real results fast.